this video I would like to talk about version management in the XB API management solution. Let's suppose you have an API in production which is used by your consumers and you would like to update that API. Um, updates or version changes, um, they are two different things. So that means you can have breaking changes and non-breaking changes. Non-breaking changes are all changes where you add a new method or where you put new optional parameters to existing API endpoints. So that means I could add a new query parameter to that existing IP address endpoint. That means I, with that change, I will not break existing consumers. For that API, I do have existing subscribers. They are using that APIs. And for some of them, there are also configured maybe quotes that are applied at runtime. For instance, for that client number one, I have a quote configured that allows the client to execute that API two times in, in two minutes before he steps into that uh, too many requests. And now let's say that I would like to make some kind of evolution to that API and say, I would like to add a new address endpoint. Um, you go back to your API design tool. And uh, here I have actually configured these two, no, not sorry, not here, these two endpoints, XB Imagine and the IP address endpoint. And I have another one already prepared, which is taking in the city and the country and should basically do the same thing, um, like the app IP address endpoint. And this is a non-breaking change because it adds an additional path to the existing API, which is fully okay. And with that, you can stay to the primary exposure path of that API. So that means that API version one, because this is the general recommendation, stay to that path, stick to that path as long as possible, because otherwise you are creating some kind of point-to-point -point integrations because you will then have clients using version one, clients using version two, version three, and so on and so forth. And with that, you, you it's hard to maintain a lot of a lot of this, the same API with a lot of different versions. So in that case, with that change, um, I could apply my change easily. You may have, and very likely you do have, more sophisticated, more complicated APIs than I do. And my general recommendation is to have integration tests as part of your API deploy deployment pipeline, which is making sure that your exposed API, that your registered API, maybe with the IP address endpoint and with the XB Imagine endpoint is in place. And if you then come back six months later and modify an existing API, you rerun your integration test and then you know, do I made a breaking change or do I not? and then you can apply the changes on the same path in production. Okay, um, of course, with the necessary staging and tests and so on. So let's suppose I um, have added this path. This is now, let's say, an evolution, and I have prepared that. That's why a different name of my API definition. I go into my desired state configuration of my API, which defines the name, the exposure path, and so on. And I would like now to change the API definition, which should be related with that API configuration. I'm just copy the name to make sure I'm not making a mistake. And now my API, my desired state of my API is pointing to the new API definition. And the only thing I'm doing now is to tell API imports, Vega Promote, to take that complete config and put it into or replicated into the API management system. Additionally, I set that flag force true, um, which is required for Swagger Promote whenever there is a breaking change or potential breaking change. And that API definition might contain a potential breaking change. And this is something like a final gate. And I have maybe um, executed my integration tests, my unit tests, so I'm sure that I do not break anything. And that's why I'm saying, yeah, please do that, force it. And now the API definition is replicated. And when I go back into API portal and reload that API, I go into that 
of course I could also add the version tag and could take it from the released artifact or something like that and then to to indicate to consumers there is a change in the background that API has changed slightly. I still have the same consumers consuming my API and I still have the quotes defined as before. But as you can see now, there is an additional endpoint, city and country. I stick to that IP address endpoint, try it out, execute it once. It's working, execute it twice. And on the fill time, it is going into the same quote configuration as before for that API. And all that process you have seen actually is totally or let's say it's zero downtime. Customers, consumers will not realize that you have flipped, that you have changed the API. And this makes the API lifecycle management of such kind of non-breaking changes very easy. And now let's go into a situation where you would like to apply a non-breaking -break, change and say you would like to remove that endpoint, which is to, maybe used by existing consumers. And you cannot do that because, or you cannot do that without, um, try uh, without making sure or without knowing what to do because this um, may break then um, consumers when they are hitting that endpoint. So anyway, I decided this endpoint is some kind of useless and that's why I'm going into the next state of my API, which doesn't have that endpoint anymore. So that's why this I named it some kind of breaking. Also, I changed the version of my API Swagger definition. I made clear this is version two, and I also changed the path to the downstream system. There is maybe now a new implementation service for that version two, very likely, when you do that kind of big changes. Uh, all in all, just, just a general note, I think it, it is very important to, to be very careful with the initial API design to make sure that you do not need to flip the primary version, let's say after the, when you, when you have deployed version one and six months later, you would like to add a new feature or something like that. It should not be the situation. Mm, uh, yeah, I made a mistake in the initial API design and that's why now I need, uh, need a new version. So that means um, take it seriously from the beginning, how you design your APIs. And now let's replicate also that API. I'm going back into my API definition I would like to use for that uh, Swagger definition. I'm saying that this API should now be published or should be exposed with a new path on my API management system. I also indicated here, this is now version two and the referenced open API specification is the same year, is the one you have just seen in, in my stoplight editor. And the same for all the rest for my API definition is almost the same as for the existing one. I go and replicate that now and say that should be the five, the complete one. And yeah, that's basically all I have to do. And now it is saying there the, because the path is used to identify the existing API. And as there was no existing API with version two, now a new API is created and configured in the API management system as defined here. So we go back to the API portal and now we see there are two APIs and it's good that we have a new image. So that makes it really clear. We have version two of that new API and the new one doesn't have that XV imagine endpoint anymore. So, but now one more important thing is there is an actual subscription to an application, but the application one and application two is missing because um, based on that process, existing subscriptions from the previous API are not automatically taken over. But I can do that now by going into the API management system, uh, reload the page here to get everything in a, in a fresh state. And now I can go into the front end API. You see here, I have two APIs. And now I, I select the previous one and say, for everybody who had access to the previous API, I would like to grant them access to a new API. And this is the method I'm using. I'm saying grant access to the upgrade to X-Ray Imagine version 00, zero blah, blah, blah. And then I can say, additionally, I would like to deprecate that API and maybe I set a retirement date. And then on that date, the version one um, 
gets gets retired. I'm I'm not doing that. I'm just saying upgrade to the new API. And now everybody who had access to version one also had have access to version two. And now these applications need to change the application code at least in a way that they are pointing to the new exp exposure path. And if I go now back to the API portal and I'm validating um, if now all the applications who had access before, yeah, you can see now application one and application two can access version two of my API. Okay, that's what I wanted to show as part of this video. I hope it was useful and um, talk to you soon.